As you may know, some tasks in Blender just feel unnecessarily repetitive, like setting up materials, organizing complex meshes, or trying to manage layers for texture painting, which can get tedious. So Split Studio has a free Blender add-ons that aim to take some of the weight off your shoulders. But they are not flashy or over the top, they just do the job well and integrate smoothly inside Blender. So let me walk you through some of these add-ons like text to PBR, PSD layers, face layers, and Split Studio materials. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start with text to PBR, because we've all been there, spending way too much time connecting shader nodes one by one. This add-on automates that whole process, and honestly, it is a game changer if you're dealing with multiple assets. All you need is your texture maps with proper naming conventions, like base color or roughness at the end. And the add-on sets up the materials for you in just seconds. What I like about this add-on is that it is not limited to just the basics, like base color and normal maps. It also supports ambient occlusion, metallic, emission, alpha, and even height maps. If you're using height maps, it automatically adds a subdivision modifier to make the displacement work right out of the box. And on top of that, it includes a mapping node so that you can easily adjust the texture's position, rotation, or scale without digging through the menus. Let's say you are editing the textures in something like Photoshop or Substance Painter. There is a one-click refresh feature that reloads everything in Blender, which is great. And I think this small detail makes a big difference especially if you are constantly iterating on your materials. Next up is PSD Layers, which is basically a texture painting add-on that makes Blender feel a bit more like Photoshop or Krita. I've always thought that Blender's lack of proper layers for texture painting especially was frustrating, and this tool more or less fills that gap. You can stack layers, blend them with different nodes, control their opacity, and even add masks for more precise edits. One thing I appreciate is that each layer is just a standard Blender shader node. This means everything stays lightweight and works with Blender's existing system, so it's not trying to reinvent the wheel, just making the workflow more intuitive. Another feature I think is handy is the ability to isolate individual channels, like metallic or roughness, and view them directly in the 3D viewport. This saves more guesswork when you are fine-tuning specific parts of a texture. The palette system is a nice touch too. You can paste hex codes to quickly build a palette or randomize material colors if you are trying to add some variety. It is simple, but it works well for keeping your painting process organized. Now, if you're trying to simplify working with complex meshes, face layers is a solid choice. This add-on helps you organize your mesh into layers so you can hide, lock, or select specific parts without messing with the rest of the model. From what I can see, it can be great for handling desk meshes or fine-tuning details like when you are texture painting or adjusting geometry. You can create and manage layers, assign materials to them, and even apply multiple materials to one layer, which can be pretty handy for things like ID maps or randomizing colors. And you can also lock layers, recolor them for better visibility, and quickly move between them. It also has a mesh data section, which gives you statistics on things like the number of faces, triangles, and angles in each layer, so you can quickly spot any trouble in any area. And the mesh error panels is a nice addition too. Scanning for common issues like loose faces or angons and highlighting them for you to fix right away. In addition, the pie menu is a good time saver, letting you quickly jump between layers or hide parts of your model. And generally, it is all color coded, so we can easily tell which layers are locked, selected, or unassigned. Plus, it is customizable, so you can tweak the UI to fit your workflow. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about an add-on called Layered Material, which is more of a material setup than an add-on itself. It is a nice option if you're doing texture painting or working with layered materials. It starts by appending a pre-built material with up to 10 customizable layers, each with its own alpha channel. From there, 
you can paint directly onto your model, stack in layers, and control their opacity to get the look that you want. And using it is pretty simple too. Once you're done painting, you can pack or save all the textures with just a few clicks, and generally I think it is a time saver. Why not? Especially if you're working on a project with multiple assets. It also supports different shader types. So whether you need transparency, emissive effects, or just a basic principled BSDF setup, generally I think it got you covered. And for EV users, this tool is particularly helpful because you can see all the stack layers in real time. So it is a lot easier to visualize how everything blends together without constantly toggling things on and off. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these blender tools and add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.